Welcome to Slash and Cast. This is the first episode of Slash and Cast. This is a brand new podcast all about horror films, and we figured a great way to start it off would be with the, of course, up and coming director, Harrison Smith, the new director of Death House, also really known for independent filmmaking. Harrison, how are you doing? Doing well, thanks. Glad to be a part of the first show. Yeah. Um, if you guys have not heard of Death House, um, of course, it has been labeled as the Expendables of Horror, which I'm sure I just hit a nerve a little bit on Harrison because I, you don't like that name, correct? No, I don't. I don't like that description. I didn't come up with that, but that's okay. That's <laughs> what they're calling it. As long as people hear about it, I guess that's all that matters. I mean, it, it really has helped you out quite a bit, right, with social media. I mean, you're getting that Expendables Horror label, which is which is good for you because you're getting some uh, notification for that, but. It also could be bad for you because a lot of people are expecting sure. this, you know, Freddy versus Jason versus Michael thing, which clearly this movie isn't. Can you go into a little detail on that? Well, yeah, the first thing I'd like to address on that is, yeah, I, I get it. The, the, the good part is it gets the word out there. The bad part is it gives off uh, a whole different uh, idea of what the film is about. But I guess the, the real thing I, I have to ask horror fans is when The Expendables came out, it wasn't like, you know, Sylvester Stallone played Cobra and, uh, you know, Bruce Willis was John McClane. So I don't understand why horror fans suddenly think that, you know, Kane Hodder is going to be Jason Voorhees and Tony Todd is going to be Candyman. And I, I don't get that. I mean, just because you put all these actors together doesn't mean they have to all go back into makeup. Right. So it's kind of a double standard. You know, they call, they call it the Expendables of Horror, but not a single one of those action stars played the roles that they were pretty iconic for. So w why would that apply to the horror film, I guess, is why I'm, what I'm asking. So that's why I, I kind of shrug it off. You know, it's like, if it gets it out there, that's cool. We, we, this horror film is the largest collection of uh, horror names put into one single film. Oh, yeah, by, by a mile. Yeah, we said the same thing when Death House was first announced, when you guys were actually went into production. It's like, why are we expecting a film with all mm -hmm. these characters when Expendables clearly does not have, you know, Rambo in it or John McClane, mm -hmm. like you said? Right. 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 Um, but that's, and I guess that's a commentary on where we are at in horror as well, too. I mean, I don't want to mash up. I, I don't think, like, for example, I, I wrote um, a piece, I have a blog called Cinema, C-Y-N-E-M-A. Right. And uh, it's about cynicism in filmmaking. And one of the things uh, that I kind of attacked was this whole desire for these kind of mashups. I mean, like for Freddy versus Jason, I always, I just thought it was stupid. You know, there's there's no need to do it. It's Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. The world of Freddy Krueger and the world of Jason Voorhees, they, they don't mesh. They don't belong together. So, you know, you're just really taking two iconic figures and mashing them up. It's, it's so different than when, the uh, you know, the cynical aspect of mashing up the Simpsons with Family Guy. You know, it's like just because you can do it doesn't really mean you should. That's Yeah, it's very true. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason is <laughs> it was bad for a lot more reasons than just mixing those characters together, but that that's a that's a whole different conversation <laughs> for a different day. Um, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> it was bad for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, is, is there any way you can actually give us a legitimate synopsis of the film? Um, the IMDb page uh, gives us a basic one, but there's actually a lot more to this film than people realize. It'd be cool if you actually give us a real detailed synopsis of this film. Sure. I mean, um, the IMDb synopsis is accurate, but the detailed synopsis is basically of two federal agents by uh, Cody Longo and Courtney Palm, and they are trapped inside a kind of Area 51 type of uh, prison, which holds the worst of the worst in the world, the worst prisoners ever. And in the ninth level are five specific prisoners known simply as the five evils. And they are the worst, and they're kept in the lowest level, and the prison is divided into nine levels, very similar to Dante's nine circles of hell, hell mm. being at the ninth level. Um, a technological snafu happens. The two have to get out of the prison, and the only way out is down. That's it. They have to go to the five evils, because Kane Hodder, who plays a character named Sieg, is pursuing them. And he also wants to get to the five evils for a whole different agenda, than what uh, Cody and Courtney need to get to them for. So it's, uh, it's a really cool thing. And inside this prison, uh, you have a, a number of, of different things going on. You find that it's more than a prison. It's an experiment lab. Um, they've been experimenting on the prisoners, uh, doing all kinds of you know, horrendous things based on, I wrote a lot of that, based on the MK Ultra experiments in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. 
Oh man, that is a way cooler synopsis than what's on IMDb because that made the movie sound <laughs> way more legit. Um, as of right now, <laughs> as of right now, what is the current status? Now we we've been keeping up there. We obviously know you're through post production, but sure. Death House says on their IMDb that it is completed. And as of like three days ago, it didn't say that. So where do you actually sit right now? Well, it will have a picture lock officially Monday. Oh, okay. Um, that means that the film is edited. There will be no more edits to the film. And then it goes uh, for, you know, color correction, and it goes for special visual effects, and it goes for its sound design and music. Uh, as for VFX, is it, have effects loaded or, or what? Yes. It, we it, have, uh, wow. what I'm really happy about is the predominant number of effects are practical. They're wow. not visual which I'm really happy about. The visual effects in this film were used to basically touch some things up, uh, fill out some backgrounds where maybe a hallway wasn't deep enough, uh, so we put a green screen down at the end of the hallway. Um, you know, I wanted practical effects, and, and I said this to Dread Central the other night. We have a practical effect in this film that I, I stand by it. will rival the chestburster scene in Alien. Right, yeah, I, I heard you say that. Man, that you know that's that's really yep. putting yourself up there. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> I am I am putting myself up there. I'm <laughs> telling you, it works. We had when when that effect went off, we didn't tell the extras about it. We didn't say what they were gonna be looking at. And when that effect went off, we had one of the extras pass out. <laughs> nice. That's so cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> um so, okay, we kind of know you as a guy that, that doesn't really like sequels, or, or not not really sequels, but carrying on films that really don't need to keep being continued. Now, that being said, do you plan on any sequel at all, or has it been discussed at all? Well, I'm not, I'm not a... Look, I have no problem with bringing back a story that gives people a good time. It's just do it right. Like, just don't, just don't make crap, you know? And that's what my, my series is all about on cinema. It's like... Yeah, just because you make a sequel doesn't mean it has to suck, you know, and and that's all I'm saying. Like, And sometimes you don't need a sequel. You know, again, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. So, um, you know, I just, I just posted a new article today on uh, not, I, I don't do film reviews, but, you know, a film will sometimes come out that I look at and I go, wow, this is, this is the reason why I write this series. And uh, Resurgence, Independence Day Resurgence was one of those films. Yeah, I, mean, I am totally with Independence you. Day Resurgence, it, it, it's terrible. And, and it represents <laughs> everything that's broken in the studio system. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with a good studio film. It's just that it represents everything that's absolutely wrong with what's going on out there in the industry. And um, it's a terrible film, hands down, one of the worst films I think I've seen in the last five years. And, uh, you know, you <laughs> sit there going, my God, we waited 20 years for this? You know, like, what, what the hell is this? So um, it's not that I'm not a fan of sequels. It's I'm, I, I want we expect like even for Death House, we expect our audience to also step up to the plate. Horror is more than just Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger and you know Jason Voorhees. It's mm -hmm. more than that, you know. And and good good fans like you know what I mean. Like the people that really know their horror understand that. But you get a lot of these Johnny Come Latelys or people that think they saw Scream 127 times yeah, that, that they're you know they're <laughs> horror fans. They're not. They're not. You know they're they're not. I mean Scream is great, but you really got to know your horror history with Scream. You yeah. Know? And yeah. I'll give you an example. You know back back when Scream came out, uh, I was in line to see it, and uh, I said to the person I was with, I said. You know, well, we all go a little mad sometimes. And this kid in front of me turned around and he goes, oh, so you saw the movie already? I go, what? He goes, yeah, that's from Scream. I go, no, that's from Psycho. And the kid is looking at me like, he's like, no, man, they, they say it in this movie. I'm like, I'm aware. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that they do. I know what the movie is about. But, you know, there, there was a thing called Psycho and a character named Norman Bates, you dumbass. No, <laughs> you know, it's like... It, no, yeah, no, you're, you're really right. You know, Especially you like frustrated with it. Yeah, this generation coming up doesn't really understand uh, what was in the past. Because I, I grew up with, like on those slasher movies, of course, but I lived off anything Hitchcock. And then even you, you mentioned Bell, uh, Bella sure. Lugosi all the time. And that's a really good example because a lot of people don't know who he yeah. is. And I don't really, like, a lot of people know his face, but they don't really realize who that is. And that's one of the biggest, you know, horror actors of all time. Right. Probably the biggest, honestly. So it's, it's hard to 
call yourself a horror fan, you don't even well, know who Bella Lugosi it's is. It's no different than when you get a. It's no different when you get a sports fan who starts rattling off, you know, who played in what Super Bowl forty years ago, fifty years ago, and they look at you like you're stupid. Yeah. Well, I look at people <laughs> like that the same way when it's like you don't you don't know who Boris Karloff was, but you call yourself a horror fan. You're not a horror fan. Okay, yeah. because it's, again, it's more than liking the flavor of the month or the last hit film, you know, and blindly following. I always cite uh, Halloween 2, uh, the 1981 Halloween 2, as, uh, as an example. I mean, Halloween 2, the, the 1981 film, is a dreadful movie. It's, it's a perfect example of a lackluster, just cynical kind of crappy sequel. And fans always give it a free pass because Jamie Lee Curtis came back and Donald Pleasant came back. And they, they say, oh, it's so great. No, it's not. Even John Carpenter has disavowed the film, you know? But because it's Michael Myers, well, they love it. And, you know, and, and look, I was in a theater in 1982 with my girlfriend, and we were one of, like, six people left after people walked out of Halloween 3. And I was one of the few people that actually liked it because I thought, this doesn't really have anything to do with Halloween, but it's kind of a cool story. Now, here we are 30-some years later, and now you got all these people, oh, I love Halloween 3. Yeah, well, that's nice, but I liked it way back when it came out in 1982 when everybody freaking hated it, you know? <laughs> yeah, even today, so, that's still an issue because people, like, this bothers me all the time because I'm on, like, all those Facebook pages of, you know, horror group members, and everybody always asks, what's your favorite Halloween movie? And, or what's your least favorite? What's, like, the worst one in the series? Everyone's like, Halloween 3, Halloween 3, Halloween 3. I was like, are, honestly, Halloween 3? Uh, compared to, like, yeah. you know, Resurrection really? or really? Halloween 6, Hall- Halloween, Halloween 5? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, like was Tara was Tara Banks in Halloween three? <laughs> I don't think so. You know? Oh man, Buster Rhymes. Uh, I, I can't, Banks. Even, right. can't even take Buster the movie seriously. Rhymes. Yeah. Right. Buster Rhymes. <laughs> yeah. how, how do you even how do you even pitch that and go? Okay, I'm thinking Buster Rhymes and Tyra Banks. That's what. <laughs> I, boy, talk about jumping the freaking shark! Holy Gosh. crap, man. <laughs> God, the sad part is that they brought in a lot of people. Like, honestly, at that time, because that was 2002, they brought in a well, legitimate amount of people, and, and they were terrible. Because it's blind faith. It's just, <laughs> well, Michael Myers is in it, so I'm going to go see it. That's what they do. You know, right. Eli Roth said it best. He said, you know, horror fans are always bitching that they want something new. Then you give it to them, and all they do is say, well, it's not like this. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, no, it's not like that, because that, that is that. I, I spent a lot of time trying to convince people that the Babadook was good. And then they watch it, and they're like, this is really weird. This is not what we'd expect. And, like, they hated it. It It's like, this is a good movie. This is, like, legit suspense building. These are earned scares. And it's creative. It's original. I mean, do you want something you've already seen before? Is that what you're looking for? Or, like... Yeah, the Babadook's one of my favorites right now. My only issue with the the Babadook was is that it was very overhyped. You know, when... When they trotted out William Friedkin, who did what I feel is probably the, the godfather of horror movies, The Exorcist, yes. and you know they, they, they get him out there saying, this is the most terrifying film I've ever seen. I'm like, son of a bitch, I better watch this. And then I'm watching, I'm going, uh, okay. I mean, it's well made, the whole thing, like you said. There's, it's, it was a breath of fresh air. I have no problem with it. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderfully made film, the whole thing. But it is hardly the most terrifying motion picture I've ever seen. Yeah, you know. Yeah, agreed. so it was like, all right, who slipped? Who slipped William freaking a couple bucks? Who's you know, <laughs> like, how does this happen? You know, yeah. I mean, I don't know if that happened or not. I'm just pointing out that you know, don't overhype something. Why? Why can't a movie just stand on its own for its own merit? I mean, if I had gone into the Babadook thinking that this is a clever, you know, creative kind of uh, film and and low key, I, I think I would have liked it a lot more than what I did. I kind of felt you know shortchanged a little bit, like. You know, like going on a roller coaster and finding out instead of, you know, the super duper looper you're getting, you know, like the, the old kitty roller coaster, you know? Right, right. Yeah, the the hype does ruin that one. It's the same for, right. I mean, even like stuff like The Force Awakens for like Star Wars, that kind of was, you get something overhyped like that, you go in with all your hopes up, and then, you know, it's still a great movie, but it's like, is this what, should, how it should be hyped? Yeah, I well, agree. I think, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, yeah, I think a lot, I think a lot of people all walked out of The Force Awakens just feeling good that they didn't get screwed like they did on those three prequels. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah that's, that's <laughs> how we going. felt. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. how we felt. I, I mean, look, you're sitting, you're sitting halfway through it going, oh, I see what they did here. They just basically remade A New Hope. But, it still doesn't have midichlorians and Jar Jar Binks, so I'm going to go with this one. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, right, right. 
Um, I'll, I'll bring it back to, D- to Death House a little bit. Um, one of the sure. biggest things you've been saying is that um, there are a lot of Easter eggs in the movie. Of course, like references to some of like you know the biggest horror movies of all time. That's why you need to know your horror before you step into this movie. But for characters yeah. like people like Kane Hodder, yeah. for example, will there be Easter eggs directly related to like Jason, for example? Yes, absolutely. We have uh, several really good Jason references, and one of the best references of all, and I'll tell you a funny story about this, is the fact that Kane Hodder's character, and this is not a spoiler, um, Kane Hodder's character can regenerate. So he gets shot, you know, and he falls down, and he, he can heal. Oh, he yeah. gets back up, and he starts doing his, his, his thing, you He's know, like he, he doesn't die kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Well, anyway, we're editing this thing, and we have an editor one of the editors, he's probably about ah, 26, somewhere there. And he said to me one afternoon in an editing session, he said, you know, Harris, I'm going to ask you, he said, I, there's something I don't get here. And I said, well, what, what don't you get? And he said, well, you know, like, uh, how does Kane keep coming back? And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, you don't really ever make it clear. I said, well, we, we make it clear that he's dabbled in Nazi occultism and that he studied a lot of occult stuff and witchcraft that he probably came across something somewhere. He goes, well, don't you think you should spell that out a little better? I go, let me ask you something. I said, you're Friday the 13th fan? He goes, because I fucking love Kane Hodder. I, I own all the, the Friday the 13th movies, every single one, including including the remakes. I'm like, okay, so do you ever ask, like, did you ask Jason Drowned in the 1980 film, uh, how did he come back? And most of all, how did he come back as this big hulking thing? Yeah. What kind of workout <laughs> program did he have at the bottom of the <laughs> the lake? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> and then he gets his head chopped off in part four, and then he comes back in part six, and his head is magically reattached. I, I don't know how that happens. I guess lightning seals your chopped off head back to your body. And then, of course, they systematically, for the rest of the film, shoot him, chop him, blow him up, you know, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I said, when Kane Hodder wears a mask, you don't question. But when he's out of a mask, you have questions. Right. And yeah. he's like, I guess I never thought of it that way. It's like, <laughs> right. Yeah, when you add backstory why do you to need anything. An explanation? Yeah, exactly. When you add backstory to anything, that's why, um, to oh. me, that's why Rob Zombie's Halloween doesn't work. We talk about this all the time. This somehow comes up in every podcast. Right. <laughs> is once you add you know, backstory right. to something like that, then it doesn't really work anymore. And it's, <laughs> it's not scary for sure. Also, the Star Wars prequels. Look, the one thing I will say, and I'll do this. I mean, I, I've talked about Rob Zombie's Halloween. Look, I, I never met Rob. I don't want to trash his work. I'm not like that. But I will say this. In the original Halloween, Michael Myers, you know, does his thing, and he comes back to Haddonfield. This is before it's revealed that Jamie Lee Curtis is his sister and all that soap opera garbage. Um, he was just a random thing. And when you shoot him... And he comes back. The only explanation we ever get in the film is from Donald Pleasant. He's evil. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. And all of this went, okay, I buy it. He's <laughs> yeah. evil. So that's why he does it. I mean, now as Halloween is made, I'd like to see what they do with this latest reboot. Oh, maybe it'll be a scene where some scientist shows us the microscope slide of his cells regenerating. And Man, we I have to figure not. out how he can do this. We could save, mil- we could save millions of lives, perhaps even end death. And the sad part is, I can see dialogue like that happening on the screen. Oh, you know, God. like I can see the bad version of that. Where, but <laughs> seriously, I mean, we did it with Star Wars, right? The Force isn't some type of spiritual thing. No, it's a, it's a, it's basically a genetic condition that you can inherit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's very that? true. Did anybody ask for that? No, no. <laughs> did any of us ask for that? Yeah. No, and we don't. We don't want to know. Like. It's like a tornado. The minute you start explaining how a tornado works, they're less frightening. But when a tornado touches down in a neighborhood and it hits your house, but not your neighbors or vice versa, the randomness is terrifying. You know? And that's how Michael Myers was. He was this tornado that touched down in Haddonfield, and he might hit your house, and he might hit your neighbor's house. You just don't know where he's going. You know? And that that was what was so scary about it all. You know, now... Do we need an explanation of Michael Myers' origin? Do we, you know, in zombie film, you know, do we do we need to know his mother was a stripper and father's abusive? Do we need this? No. You know, like <laughs> no. that doesn't add any depth to anything. No. I mean, do we need this? Do we need to explain why the shark in Jaws just showed up? Uh, I don't know. He he just you know he caught a current that took him into Amity and 
and it explains everything why he's there? No. Freaking shark shows up and he does what sharks do. He eats. Now, Jaws 4, of course. Oh, okay. Don't clear, even, but, like, you know, start on Jaws 4. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that yeah. movie's so bad. I actually read your blog on that one. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that it is. It is, in my opinion, hands down, the worst motion picture ever made. <laughs> Ed Wood has done. Ed Wood didn't do anything even close to the horrendousness of Jaws four. Yeah, yeah, that one. It's hilarious. It's like one of those movies that are so bad. It's funny. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll. Uh, we'll yeah. go we'll cut into your filmmaking a little bit here. Um, I mean, you actually have, like, a, you know, a decent resume on your back, obviously. I mean, now you have Death House. But of course, you had, you know, Camp Dread, Zombie Killers. I mean, uh, Elephant's Graveheart is, is pretty awesome. I, I love that movie. Um, Thank but, you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> when you take that, that step to Death House, obviously, this is the biggest, you know, most famous cast you worked with. Is that, a, a, like, a lot of pressure? Did you have a, was it tough for you to make that transition? Not at all. No, and, and I'll tell you, the people that you worked with on this, like Bill Mosley and all these people, the nicest damn people, you know? And I'm not just saying that because I got to say that on the press <laughs> store thing. They really were the nicest damn <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they joked around and they, they all kind of felt like this is pretty cool because, you know, they signed on to do this for Gunnar Hansen, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was really nice. Like, Bill and all them, when they gathered on set in Los Angeles for the first day of shooting him and Michael Berryman and Vernon Wells and all these guys... Um, you know, he said right out, he, he said, you know, they all kind of got together and they said, you know, this is for you, Gunner. Like, that's one of their fallen, you know, and there's a lot of camaraderie in the horror genre. And I felt like I was on set of something pretty special. I was never intimidated, um, never nervous. Uh, I got to watch Bill Mosley and Kane Hodder and, and Michael Berryman do the Three Stooges. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. And, they all did that. and yeah, and, you know, I turned to my first assistant director and I said, you know, we're getting to see something pretty cool here. Like this is pretty cool. Yeah, they're they are like they always so, say. Everyone always says people that work yeah, in we, horror are the nicest people, which I couldn't agree more, honestly. Because I've met quite a few of the people in, in Death House, and they're honestly just the nicest people. I actually went. I go to school with with Kane's son, so I see. I saw Kane quite a bit, and Kane is just the nicest guy. Super humble, and you honestly you wouldn't even he realize really who no. he like. He doesn't really get. He never talks about it to these people that don't know him because I'm going to school all these kids I go to school with have no idea who this guy is and then I'm like you don't know who this guy is he's such a big deal and then you know <laughs> Kane is just super humble and never even brings it up yep yeah they're just, yep, just great guys he's uh yeah Kane has such a great sense of humor too he was kind of like the class clown on set and <laughs> um just like I said it was such a pleasurable experience making this movie it really was yeah. Uh, do, now, do you have any idea um, how distribution is going to go yet? Because now you can't give a legitimate release date, of course, and you have distribution. Do you have any idea who's going to try picking it up yet? I, I never like to speculate on that because anything can happen. I know that we are getting inquiries, um, and a lot of that is out of my hands because I'm just the director, like the executive producers and all of that. They, they, they'll really decide all of that. Um, so for me, no, I'm not going to speculate, but I... I do know that we're getting a lot of really, really hot interest, and uh, I think we'll end up in a in a good place no matter where. And we're looking at uh, hopefully, you know, a, a January, February, twenty seventeen release. Okay, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's not. I thought I was gonna have to wait a lot longer. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> For okay, I wanted to to bring this up because you you obviously made the scream cover with you know James Wan and the Conjuring too. That that's you know, you've been tweeting that out a lot lately. Now, you said to James Wan to call you. Do you have any interest in a project to work with James Wan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, James Wan's the director. I mean, it, what I would love is what happened to Gareth Williams. That James Wan comes along and says, hey, I saw your stuff. You, you want to take a crack at, you know, Godzilla? You know what I mean? Like, I'd love to see something like that. Yeah. Um, will James Wan call me? Absolutely not. He will not call me. He will. <laughs> uh, I'm way freaking busy. <sighs> He's not calling me. I was just doing that just to, you know, that's the social media thing that you do. Of course. You know? Mm. Yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be really cool, man. That's who have, I'd want to get in zero, with. I have zero <laughs> expectations. Because <laughs> James Wan is, you know, <laughs> obviously the number one dude. I mean, James Wan's the number one dude in horror right now. Like, he's taken over this generation. And has, yeah, he's yeah. very original, very does, good at suspense he building. He doesn't need Harrison Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, though, that writing right. credit you have, you, I mean, you're clearly a hell of a writer. 
um, you took over for Gunner after you know he passed. Um, that's actually what I wanted to lean into next. Do you like writing more than directing, or how, sure. how do you lean there? I really love writing, uh, but the fun part of directing is seeing the stuff that you wrote come to life, and you hear your words actually manifest into you know an actor and the way that they portray it. Um, but yeah, I mean, with with writing this, I mean, Gunner, you know, had this script for a while uh, since around two thousand five. So I'm sorry, 2010. I'm sorry, 2010. And, um, you know, it was finally brought to me by Entertainment Factory's uh, Rick Finkelstein and Stephen Chase. And they brought it to me. Uh, they came to a zombie killer screening. They saw the film out in L.A. And they came up afterwards and said, listen, we think you might be the guy here to, to do this project. Do you know who Gunnar Hansen is? I'm like, does the Pope wear a funny hat? Does yeah. <laughs> so, you know. So yeah. uh, I met with Gunner, and we went over this, and Gunner, Gunner told me his concerns and what he wanted to see done. And, you know, again, how these horror people are just so nice. I mean, Gunner was just such a gentleman and such a gentle giant. He never let on once that he was ill. Never once. I had no idea until literally, you know, maybe like five days before he died. Um, you know, my executive producer called me, and, and he just said, he goes, look, I got some terrible news. He goes, Gunner's on his deathbed. I'm like, what the hell happened? Like, the last time I saw the guy, he was, I mean, it, it really moved fast. He had um, pancreatic cancer. Mm-hmm. So right. he moved, it moved, it ripped right through him. Um, but it's a shame, you know. But yeah, it was, it was daunting in that way to make sure that I kept true to what Gunner wanted. And one of the last things he said to me only a couple of weeks before he died was that, you know, the script has, has his blessing. You know, he's like, I like what you did with this and just get it made. And, and then his last words to Rick uh, our, our producer was, he just basically said, you know, look, exploit my death, you know, if you have to, to get this movie made. And he said, if you have to, film it on my grave. That's what he said. <laughs> Gosh. Wow. Yeah, I, I know. I One person yeah. I feel so bad, I really wanted to meet was Gunner. And to see his, you know, his uh, last bit of work that he really wanted to have and come to life was great. That's why I was so glad to hear um, that it was getting pushed forward. It, it kind of happened really quickly with for production because I remember talking to Kane and be like, "Hey, you know, everyone's talking about this, you know, this new Expendables of Horror." That I was, I was still calling it then at that time. I apologize, but it, <laughs> everyone's talking about this, and <laughs> it's, um, it's, is it going to happen? And Kane was like, "I have, you know, everyone's talking about it. Haven't heard a thing." And then two weeks later, I saw him, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I'll be in Philly next week shooting Death House." I'm like what you said. You said like two days ago. Yep. <laughs> like, we're That's not happened. doing it. Yeah. Did, did it happen that quickly yeah, for Kane, like for you? Kane plays things very. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Kane plays things very close to the vest. You know, he doesn't. I, I what I like about Kane is look, this industry is full of a lot of bullshit. All you have to do is go on IMDb. Like, for example, you go on my IMDb, you don't see twenty five projects in production, in development, all of that stuff. I don't do that. You know, I call those people IMDb whores. You know, they, they just fill their IMDb up with garbage is what they do. And they, they act like, you know, hey, I'm doing this. I got this going on. Well, actually, you really don't have anything going on. But OK. So Kane is like that, too. If it's for real, they'll talk about it. And if it isn't, well, then you wait and see. Because, you know, you know, you start talking about these projects and then, it, you know, look, they fall through. Uh, money goes away. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, you don't know. Then you look like a dumbass. You know, yeah. you're out there on the on the circuit, and everybody's like, "Oh, I thought you said you were doing this." You know, so um, with me, I you know, everybody was asking me about Death House and all that, and I said, "Well, as soon as the money locks, then the money locks rather quickly, and we were off to the races." You know, yeah, that, that's really cool. I, I'm just glad you guys got the money to do it. That's that's all that really mattered to me. <laughs> Yeah, um, we did. Yeah. yeah, we got good investors behind us. They're good people. Good. Um, well, are we taking up quite a bit of your time here? So I, I really want to leave it to on one question. Okay, if you could go back sure. and make like recreate any <laughs> horror film, of course you don't like remakes, but of course if you could redo any horror film ever, what would it be? Wow. Um, I see the one is in a horror film, but I would love to get my hands on it. And the other one, I would love to go back. Hmm. See, they, they remade Don't Be Afraid of the Dark with Katie Holmes, and I always loved that one growing up. I would have to say I'd like to go back and remake Let's Scare Jessica to Death. 
Oh, that's a, I did not expect that answer. <laughs> yep. That's what I would like to do because I still think it's a very effective atmospheric small film. It really was. But it, it kind of got, a, you know, boned on distribution. And yeah. it was kind of like a... I, I, you, you couldn't really peg it as one type of, of horror. But if there was a horror film I could go back and do, it would be Let's Scare Jessica to Death. Because I think... I think there was room for improvement, although I do very much like the original. I'm, I'm not saying it's the best movie. I'm sure people now will go out and watch it. What the hell is he talking about? It <laughs> sucks. I'm just saying that I liked it. it. It effectively scared me as a kid growing up. Still creeps me out when I watch it today. It's very 70s. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I would go back and I would do that. I would give that a, a modern day update. I would like to do that. Yeah. I, yeah. Not many people have actually heard of that film. That's a very odd film. Honestly, so that would be cool to see remade. Maybe that's what we should do. Quit remaking all the ones we've seen before and do something like that. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd almost be like you're, you're making it brand new because so few people nowadays know know about it. You know, it mm-hmm. was made in 76, starred Zora Lamper, and uh, was directed by John Hancock, who to this day I still say I would have loved to have seen him make Jaws 2 because his Jaws 2 was very, very different than what we got. And I would love to have seen what, what that would have been. I think we would have had a, a very effective Jaws 2 that might have gone right up there even closer or in some ways surpassed the sequel if it had been done that way. Right. I'm sorry, the original. Yeah. Mm. Right. Okay, well, you said that you had one for and non-horror. Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. Oh, I didn't. Well, there you go. There's. Uh, that, <laughs> that's, that's Mike's uh, favorite horror film. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Well, Jaws is my Jaws is a movie that made me want to make movies, you know. Um, now you know. But for the other one, it's a really ch- cheesy uh, dinosaur movie called The Last Dinosaur with Richard Boone and Joan Van one. Art. I have and not man, seen that one. If I had the budget to make that, I would cast. Um, oh damn! I, I, I'm just like drawing a blank because I'm just so <laughs> beat. Uh, Brian Cranston. I'm sorry. I would cast Brian Cranston in it. As the hunter, I would I would cast him in the Richard Boone role. Of, yeah, mm. that would make sense. I mean, he was in Godzilla for about two seconds, and then he died. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, for about two seconds, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, except he, the whole movie was be, promoted yeah, off him. He, he would be in the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the way it should have been in Godzilla. Um, okay, uh, Harrison. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. This is a great <laughs> first episode. It was a great way to start. Um, sorry, we took up too much of your time. Um, whew. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> well, um, good luck on Death House. I hope everything goes well. I really hope you get the distribution you want. Um, before I let you go, though, you. What, what are we thinking on a trailer here, though? When, when are we going to see the legit one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great question. We were just <laughs> talking about the trailer today. <clears throat> the trailer is just will be done at the end of this month. Now, the debut of the trailer is a different thing because we want to really debut this in a special venue, and we also want to give access to the media but we really want to debut this right, and it looks like um, we have a convention, a pretty big horror convention we're going to debut the trailer at. And I don't want to say which convention it is yet because there are a couple things in play, but once that's locked, I think that's going to be the plan. So there you got an exclusive right Listen, there. Listen, I'm not, I'm not going to say what convention you should go to, but you should go to Flashback <laughs> because that's where I'll be, <laughs> and I'd really enjoy seeing it before everyone else. So I'm just saying if you, you should go to Flashback. That'd be great. <laughs> it's, it's a damn it's a damn good trailer it really is digital cave is our uh editing and post house and they did a bang up job on this trailer i mean you're gonna watch it and go okay i see what this is I, and, and hopefully people go okay now i gotta see it yeah <laughs> all right i'll let you go harrison thank you so much for being on the show it was a pleasure and good luck with death house i hope you go to flashback <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. It was a real pleasure, too. And good luck on pioneering your podcast. Anytime you need me back, just let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, <coughs> thank you guys so much for watching the first episode of Slashing Cast. And another huge thanks to Harrison Smith for being a part of it. That's pretty great, I think, for all of us, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. definitely. Real pleasure. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a like and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this one. And drop on by our Facebook page and Twitter at RJL Productions. And I think that's it. I'm Mike. That's Riley. That's Nick. This is Slash and Cast. Goodbye. <laughs>